So I'm currently suspended right now and uh, you can't hurt me anymore right now, but like we go back onto YouTube once I'm out of jail, I'm going to have to think very carefully about what I'm clipping from this interview. So if you want to see everything that Dr. Corey had to say, you have to go to my other platforms. The links are in the description. And one of the great places to go is alicemorrow.locals.com because I always post my interviews ahead of time and you can put in questions, which I'm going to get to Dr. Corey. I'm now starting to be more convinced that the, that whatever it is that that is dividing us is is being allowed by who whoever or whatever it is that sort of plants the seeds of division. It's like we should be very wary if there's something that that we're all hot on because in my opinion, I'm curious if there's some other big thing out there that this is just being used to distract us from. And, um, and, and so we just, we stay divided over these, these sort of like mini topics that the power structure allows us to debate so that we won't be looking somewhere else. And, and I know that kind of, I used to think that that would be like a conspiracy way of thinking about things. And now I'm down that rabbit hole and it makes me question all of the narratives that I repeated as a TV news reporter, what, who, and what's, what purpose was I serving? And was I really serving the truth? I think those are all good questions to ask. I, I mean, I, I didn't, I never understood that I, I was living in as much of a narrative as we are. I mean, I actually thought it, when, when I read the New York Times, so I'm like, I'm, I'm a, a lifelong daily New York Times reader, right? And I'm not holding out New York Times as the only example, but like, when I would read a journalist or their assessment of a topic, I always thought that they had done deep research analysis and arrived at an independent conclusion that was fact-based. And I never knew that the opposite could occur on a routine, if not systematic basis until COVID. Because what happened with COVID is I became an expert at certain facets of this disease and of the data around the disease. And I would see things ap appearing in the media, which were ab just patently false. And, and they, they basically belied either a journalist who hadn't done their homework or was told not to do their homework or basically was just kind of dialing in a story that was written before they even did any analysis. And then I started to see it in some of the interviews I was doing. So like right now you and I are doing a podcast, which is kind of the forum that I like. I, <clears throat> you know, when I get, you know, I've, I've had many experiences where I've had a reporter from a major sort of like a mainstream media outlet call me and I had to learn the lesson the hard way, but that the story as a reporter yourself, you probably, <laughs> you'd be like, wow, you're just figuring that out now. But I had to learn that the story was actually already written before the interview. And I was really just there to, to maybe have a faux pas or some little snippet of a, of a quote that they could use to further their narrative. And so I, I, I've been really, uh, I don't know, de demoralized about, I, I don't know if I want to make this about media, but media is one of the problems because it's not just media, Allison. You, what you, I, I, cause Media is your profession and your expertise. Uh -huh. I actually live in medicine. And right. what I've actually had to see about medicine yeah. as Holy disturbing. Friend. So the medical journals, what I've mm -hmm. seen, like the control of the medical journals, which I actually thought were objective and scientific outlets for truth. Now mm -hmm. I see that they are as easily influenced and co-opted as, as newspapers. And so yeah. I would never learn this lesson if I didn't know what I know, which is I know the truth and I know the data. And then I have to see how it's being presented, uh, how it's being censored, how it's being manipulated. And and it's it's very hard to sleep at night, Allison. At, at alisonmar.locals.com, see, this is what I did. I said that I got Dr. Pierre Corey on tomorrow. So put your questions in. Uh, and I said he was going to get a chance to respond to the men's health article. So tons of questions. So if you want your questions uh, to go direct to the people that come on, uh, definitely go over to alisonmar.locals.com. But I should also, I don't know, if anyone needs a drink, it's Dr. Corey. So I just got to promote my wine here real fast. Great Christmas idea, everybody, or Hanukkah or whatever else is coming up. Um, that is allisonwinepromo.com. And these are high altitude uh, Malbecs from Argentina, one from the second oldest vineyard, actually the oldest, I think. Don't fact check me on that. It's either the, the, the oldest or the second oldest vineyard in Argentina. And these are all like extreme altitude, close to 9,000 feet. So really I'm writing this down, Allison. What'd you say? 
I'm writing this down. Allison oh, Wine. Yeah, AllisonWinePromo.com. <laughs> You're selling and, um, It helps because um, I can't, you know, do my my ad reads on YouTube right now. And so um, I just, you know, I, I actually usually try not to do them on the other platforms so that people don't have to deal with them. But uh, I can't do them on YouTube. So I'm sorry everyone says it. But you know what, Dr. Corey, if you want to wake up with a nice cup of coffee, you could also go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison where you can get high altitude also, but shade grown USDA certified organic rose from Nicaragua. And um, the CEO and founder of the company is an American, but he lives right there where they grow, harvest and roast the beans. So it's a family operation and um, supports lots of local jobs and they do sea turtle protection. So now, now you're up my alley. So twin engine coffee.com slash Allison. Exactly, All right. yes. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to remember that one too. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. All right. So while I go get the Wait, producer, Alice, let me say one more thing. Yeah. Because you have a 19 month old who's uh, uh, awakening and I know you have uh, uh, another uh, scheduled thing. I like talking to you. You and I were talking even before we started this yeah. podcast. So let's let's talk again in case we'll we do, get cut yeah, off. We'll definitely do another one um, for sure. And, you know, as things come up, I'm curious too. Actually, why don't I just ask you this and I'll run and get her before I get Shoot. the question to the locals. Um, what did you think about Dr. McCullough on Rogan? Ooh, good question. I'm going to make you big here and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So wait, she's literally, she left me alone with all of you. Okay. So the question yeah, you is, can, you're the guest host right now. I'll be yeah. Ready. I see that. I'm, this is really cool. I like I this. Wouldn't, if we were live on YouTube, I would not trust you on YouTube. Like, since we're on Rock, <laughs> you can say whatever the hell you want. And I, and I'm not going to get booted. So I'm going to leave you alone for a it, second. Everybody be nice. To Dr. Corey. I'll be right back. <laughs> this is brilliant. Um, so so first of all, Peter McCullough is one of, I would say, the club, right, which is a, a truth teller and, and a, a very um, close student of COVID therapeutics. I think his work um, is historic. So he was probably, um, he's. I think he's one of the pioneers in, um, as he calls it, you know, multimodal or a, a combination therapy, early treatment protocols, which is really the name of the game of COVID 